Hey, so I just uh, finished seeing Tyler Perry's Acrimony. And um, despite what most people have said about the movie, I actually thought that it was pretty good. I thought it was pretty decent. Uh, I love Taraji P. Henson. She's an amazing and beautiful actress. Um, but seeing that movie uh, brought back a lot of memories of my of my life over the last year and the the bitterness and the the hatred and the the anger that she expressed in that movie reminded me a lot about what I had experienced this past year in dealing with the relationship with somebody some of you all probably around the same time that I bought this car my my Mercedes I had expressed that I had been involved in a a very violent relationship that also resulted in domestic violence and I never knew what the perfect time was to share this story and I say whenever I I feel like it's time I'll I'll share it so I met a man we had met online we dated for Actually, we knew each other for probably uh, a couple of years, just keeping in touch. Uh, even while we were both seeing other people, we just kept in touch and just, you know, we're decent friends or so acquaintances. And when we decided to get serious with each other, things went, but they went really quick and really fast. And I was living in Seattle at the time and he was living in Chicago. And while he was willing to relocate to Seattle, I said, you know what? It's kind of rainy here and everything. And I think I'd rather be, I'd rather be in Chicago so I can be closer to my family in Indianapolis. So I got an internship in Chicago so that I could finish up grad school. And I moved, I'd never moved for a man or for a relationship before, but there was something about this situation that made me feel like, like I could, I could take risks. I could take chances. I could live life on edge and know that I had a support system outside of my family. I, I had someone who I felt truly had genuine and organic feelings for me. About a couple months in or so living together, arguments started to happen. Arguments about anything. Every little thing you can probably think of was an argument. And I cannot understand why everything was an argument. If I didn't do things his way, then it was the wrong way. If he didn't do it, then it wasn't done right. If he didn't give the instructions on how it was supposed to have been done, then it was just wrong. We even argued about the diploma frame for my grad school graduation, a frame that I wanted to buy myself for my accomplishment. He said he wanted to gift it to me. And then later on down the line, complained that it was a not needed thing. He put a value on my education that I worked hard for, that I busted my ass for, and made me feel like shit. And we fast forward about nine months or so into the situation. I decided that I had enough. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. My mother was involved in a capacity that I didn't want her to be involved in. And it just became very messy. So I decided to break it off. At the time of breaking it off, it was at the same time that I was starting a new job. It was my first job out of grad school. And I got hired as a therapist, an inpatient therapist at a hospital. I started traveling a lot after we broke up because I didn't want to be in the house at the same time to give him some time to adjust and to acclimate to the breakup. So I traveled like I usually do. I traveled. I went to Bangkok. I went to all these beautiful places. I went to New York. I saw friends. I saw family. I just got away. I even took my, my tortoise to Indianapolis so that he didn't have to be bothered with feeding him and everything while I was gone. When I came back, the agreement was that I would move out of our apartment that we both shared with our name on the lease. I would move out uh, 
30 days after I started working that would give me enough time to collect a couple checks and to just move and do what I needed to do to move on with my life. He agreed to that. And one day he he came out the bedroom and we had an argument about the television. He told me that he was going to go to Starbucks and that he wanted to watch TV when he got back home. And I didn't know quite what he meant. So I asked him what he meant. And he said, well, what I mean is either you can watch what I want to watch or you can go and do something else. And I said, what makes you feel that you have the right over how it is that we operate the common areas over a house that we pay for utilities that I pay? And he told me that he didn't know why I thought I had to say so in the matter when I was a guest in my house. So he left. He went to Starbucks. He sent my mother a very nasty text message saying that I could travel around the world and fuck other people. And he we didn't discuss my sex life and I can do all this and not get the fuck out of his house. I was I was very angry. I was furious. He got back home and I said, what makes you feel that it's appropriate to involve someone's parent in your adult matters? And it has nothing to do with them. And he said, whatever it takes to get you the fuck out of my house. He comes and he sits next to me on the couch. I move off the couch away from him. He goes to throw his food away while we're still talking that he got from Starbucks. And as he's walking by me, he bumped my shoulder so hard that he was still in a close enough proximity for me to push him away. As I started pushing him away, he then came back towards me and was pushing me over the arm of the couch. I was slipping on the floor. And while I was slipping on the floor, I couldn't catch a good grip because I had socks on and we had hardwood floors. So once I finally got my foot onto the ground, after kicking my socks off with my feet, I pushed him and he fell on the floor. We called the police. I called the police. He called the police. And he told me before he called the police, you know, if I call the police, what will happen? And this will ruin your career. And I said, you need to do what you need to do because I'm calling the police regardless. He went downstairs when he called the police. And I didn't want to go downstairs outside to further agitate the situation. So I told the police to call me when they got there. I called the police again to see where they had been because it had been 15, 20 minutes. They just told me the police were on the way. When the police finally came for me, they came in my house and they placed me under arrest without even so much as asking me what my narrative was. So as you can imagine, it did not feel good going to jail. I went to jail, I was there overnight. My mother assisted as much as she could from afar. And then I had a restraining order placed on me and I couldn't even walk in my own house where I paid bills at. I had to sleep in a hotel for a week until I could find some place for me to stay. And not only that, but every time I went to my house to go and get my things, there had to be the police present and I had to call them to make sure it was prearranged and that it was okay with him and that he was there to oversee it all. <laughs> Lawyers and court dates and follow-ups. So as you can imagine, I want to fight. At this point, I'm angry. I am so upset. I am so mad. I'm furious. And I'm like, nah, I'm not letting him get away with this shit. How is it that this man can put his hands on me and yet I'm the one who was needing to defend myself? So I wanted to fight. But you know what was presented to me when I went to court? It was either you can accept a misdemeanor, simple battery, or if you want to fight, it's a misdemeanor, domestic violence, something that could ruin my career as a therapist and as a social worker. So what choices did I have? I didn't have any choices. 
I was forced to make a decision based out of the last seven years or so that I had put into my education, the hard work that I had put into my education. I had fun. I did whatever it was I wanted to do, but I always kept my priorities straight with my education so that I could do what I want to do, which was to help people. It's what I love to do. I remember not even wanting a master's degree. And it was the master's degree that inspired the bachelor's degree so that I could do what I wanted to do that would make me happy in life. So we go to court and as you can imagine, I'm just sitting there and tears just start rolling down my face and I couldn't stop the tears from rolling down my face because I was embarrassed. I had never, never been in a situation like that. And here I am listening to a judge talk about what it is I can do, what it is that I can't do. And am I aware of all these different things that come along with me pleading guilty? But the odds were that if I fought it, my career would have been over. So I I shared all this with you to say, really, 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 truly get to know who it is that you're involved with. Because you don't know the type of monsters that are lurking behind every smile and every kind gesture. Do I hate him? No, I don't hate him. I forgive him, but more so than forgiving him, I forgive myself. I forgive myself and I take full responsibility for the role that I played in the situation. No, life wasn't fair, but life is not always fair. And there's always a lesson in everything that we go through. So if I have any advice to give to anybody, know who it is that you're dating. Take the time to truly get to know that person. Look at all the details, how that person treats their mother how they how they treat their family members. That man would come home every day from work and complain about how much he hated his job. But because I was a supportive partner, I offered to redo his resume, redid his resume, fought me all the way through it and told me that he felt like he was in kindergarten because there were so many red X's on the paper and corrections that needed to be made. But after we finished with all the edits, he submitted his resume. He's now making an additional $50,000 more than what he was making when we met each other just a short five months into the dating process. Get to know who it is that you're dating. More so, get to know yourself and be honest with yourself about the decisions that you're making and be honest with yourself about how you truly feel here. When you know that it's not right, you just know that it's not right. Let it go and move on. All right?